Yo boys, what's going on? Yorkie here and welcome back to another episode of this FIFA 22 Tottenham Hotspur career mode save. Today we're going to round out the transfer window. We take on Man City as well to kick this one off. But let's just get straight into it, boys. We've got some numbers to change as well first. Now, if you did miss the last episode, you will have missed this absolutely unbelievable signing of Letaro Martinez. We did mention in the first season that he was the potential player that we would pick up to replace Harry Kane. And although there was a 50-50 in the background about whether it was the right decision or not, more than anything realistic i just want to clear up what i mean by realistic in this so we base the signing on a year on i kind of treat fifa as a sandbox letaro martinez had a good season at inter milan but they didn't win the league in fact they finished third in syria and they didn't do anything in europe this is a 50 50 whether he'd have gone somewhere else but maybe man city wouldn't have signed him because they picked up erling Haaland and liverpool signed harry kane from us so there weren't as many options as they usually would have been and tottenham were the team to sign him i don't think that's super unrealistic but i do get where people are coming from when i do say realistic as i say i don't necessarily mean current day i more mean what's going on in the save so it was the same situation with roberto firmino now i will call him firmino from time to time because it's just what i've always called him so i'm sorry i'm terrible with names if you learn one thing while you're here at the channel is i suck at names and that's not going to change that will never change i will forever be rubbish with names but i am going to try and remember that it is firmino not firmino for me, no. But we're going to try it. The same with him. Not getting game time at Liverpool. Veghurst went into Liverpool. They were looking for another striker after finishing second in the league and failing to do anything in Europe, being knocked out in the last 16. So they opted for Harry Kane. Couldn't afford the 150 million that us at Tottenham wanted for Harry Kane. So they offered up Bobby Firmino in the deal. That's how I make that realistic in my head. This is just the way I enjoy playing FIFA. And I'll make decisions based off that and what's going on in the current game world as we play on. I do apologize if it does seem to be mixed up with the idea of what they do in real life now and what I'm doing in terms of what I think is realistic in the game save. Like, I'm not going to go and sign Mbappe because there's no way he would ever sign for us, even the Spurs that we've built right now. But these players potentially would. I do have to change some numbers. Letaro's number is the main one. I agree. He should be our number 10. There is no doubt that he should be our number 10. Now, Firmino will lose number 10, obviously and what does it put him at number 14 i'm kind of okay with number 14 so i'm gonna stick roberto firmino at number 14 for now now business in this window that we've got left to do probably isn't gonna be much there's some great suggestions that have been left in the comments and by the way you guys smashed the last video so thank you very much as per usual if you are new around here please smash that subscribe button as well as hitting the like button I, I genuinely don't think there's that much business that we need to do. I'm quite happy with the squad at the moment. Now, I would not mind maybe one more centre-back, but points were made in the comments that are correct. Hoiberg had an unbelievable season for us last year, so we can't just be selling him. Sanchez as well. I know some of you don't particularly like him, but he had a great season for us last year. And if we're going off the season that he had for us in the save... We probably shouldn't sell him either. He was really good for us. And when I look at the team, there's a few positions. Maybe Davis leaves the club and we bring another left back in. But there's a few positions that really we're just kind of stacked at. And I don't think we need to do that much business now. But we'll see. You never know what the window is going to throw your way or what players could be moved on. We'll see how we do against Man City. If we lose here against Man City like 3-0, I'm instantly going to throw my toys out the pram and try and sign four or five players. Here we go then. This is going to be the starting 11 to take on Manchester City. Of course, they did sign Erling Haaland, but they don't seem to have done too much more business. Mendy is in the game. There's no I can do about it, and they do seem to be playing him. So I do apologize if that does offend anyone. I there's no I can do. Weirdly, though, I think there might be a bug in FIFA because it is raining again in summer. Now I have watched quite a few different series, and it seems to rain a lot in everybody's save. So maybe rain's just a thing on this year's game. Man City did not really enjoy themselves last season either, if we're being 100 percent honest. They managed to finish fifth in the table. Or it might have been sixth. It was fifth or sixth, so. They didn't have a good time. They're going to really want to prove a point in this game because they need to get back on track. Pep needs to get back on track. Erling Haaland caused me a lot of problems last time I played against Man City. That is not a bad ball, but there's nobody in the box there. I kind of got a question where my strikers were in that situation. Neres, the furthest forward, the right winger. I'm actually intrigued to see how Man City get on this season. Because obviously the sim just didn't really go their way, but we have had a, a title update. Oh, I don't know how much of a difference it's going to make, but Erling Haaland makes a huge difference every time he plays. What a finish that is. I'm not sure they needed Harry Kane, because when you can finish the football like this, don't need him. What a hit that is. Lloris didn't stand a chance. We concede 
and we've got to climb our way back into this game. And that's not the first time we've had to do that. And it won't be the last one then, Son. Show me what you got. Oh, that's good footwork. If he can go again. He might go again. He has gone again. Is he going to get the help he needs? Son. Across, surely. Letaro. And just like that, we are right back in it. 1-1. One, one. And then wide open again. Son, though, his endeavour to win that ball back. I, I just love Son. He's my hero. Letaro Martinez's first premiership goal will just be a tap-in. I'm not sure that he would complain at that. So it's just such a nice player to have in your team. You're not using him this yet. You are missing out. That is a great ball into Letaro. Who knocks it back down to David Neres across to Deli Alley. Oh, it was a nice idea. We're going to find Son here now. Gets a bit of separation, but Rodri's close to him. Oh, Martinez did brilliantly. Deli Alley might find Son. Son's got the football here. What can he do? Is he going to put another man through? He's not. He's going to finish it himself because that is exactly what Son does at this football club. 2-1 just like that. And we've always seemed to have Man City's number because they make it so easy to break on them. And look at all the space they gave Son there. And there's no doubt in my mind that he finishes them every time. Just like that. Turn the tables. 2-1 Tottenham Hotspur. And again, when we play against Man City, it always feels like there's more goals in the game for us. I think there might be more goals in this one. Jordan Pitford's gone to Leicester. Don't think that's a bad deal for them. Well in Tandanga. We could have a problem here now though. Deli Ali back defending. What a ball that is to Phil Foden. And what a banger it is from Phil Foden. Deli Ali got caught out there, didn't he? He did the right thing to try and cut the pass out, but the pass was beautiful from Sterling. It's just good play. I tried to cut it out, but oh, he gets a foot on it as well, does Deli? Oh, here we go, Man City on the attack again. They've looked the better of the two sides this second half. Riyad Mahrez doing really well there to fire that one. And Tandanga's done fantastic there against the Bruyne. Go on then, Letaro. We've got Hyung min Son as well this side. Son was the man I've gone to. I've got Letaro making that run. Son's going to fire it in, surely. Letaro Martinez with the diving header. But he finds the back of the net and it's 3-2 Tottenham just like that. Just like that. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. That link-up is superb. Man City are giving us an unbelievable fight. But when Son gets clean through like this and you don't mark Letaro Martinez, look at the power from the diving header. Beautiful finish. Deli off, Dominguez on, Tandanga off, Timber on. Bit more pace at the back and Deli Ali's knackered. Stamina definitely seems to get drained a lot quicker on this year's game, which I don't have a problem with. Forces you into more subs and I, I do like to use a lot of the players if I we can do that. And, uh, and give them opportunities if at all possible. Now we need to stay... Oh, that's not great. Handball for Mares. Thank God. Now we need to stay strong defensively is what I was going to say. Here come Man City. We're looking for an equaliser here. And that's not a good enough pass though, is it, from Bernardo Silva? The Taro there. Great footwork. Neres knows he's got the man on. Firmino. Or Firmino, should I say. Played in by Son. Oh, surely for a goal, and what fantastic football that is. And it's Bobby Firmino with the goal. And I'm really hoping that he resurrects his career here, because in real life, I'm a fan of this man, and I do hope he can resurrect his career here, and it's not a bit like a Fernando Torres situation where he's a flop. But a great knock-on from him. I thought he was offside for a second, but he ain't going to miss that. And another 4-2 against Man City. This is the third 4-2 we're going to have had against Man City. They just make for an unbelievable opponent when it comes to goals. They really do. We've got tired legs out there now. Emerson going to come off. And we'll bring on Max Ahrens. What a substitution that is that we can make. They've now brought on Ferran Torres as well. And Haaland going very close there. That's a good ball in towards Haaland. And it loops over the bar. Ahrens now. Just that one inside. Lutaro's played a beautiful ball there to, to Neres. There is a cross. This should be five. And will it go in? Dominguez. Dominguez. A 5-2 against Manchester City here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And is this a sign of the season ahead for the boys in white? It was nothing short of absolutely scrappy. But Edison got himself in a mix. Then did Mendy. Dominguez in the end finds the back of the net. It's, I mean, he gets it. This is a tight angle. I think Edison maybe could have got an arm to that. Oh, Letaro's ball there. So well disguised. And I spot a wild young Min Son for six. And I think he's onside as well. I can't believe we're beating him 6-2. I'm telling you, when you play Man City on this year's game, they are just wide open. Absolutely wide open. And this is a huge victory here for us. We can sign as many players as we want. 
but no one will come close to Son. I'm telling you now, he's going to be the cult hero of this series. The full-time whistle blows, and Manchester City in that second half just fell apart. I have no idea why, but I do not care. 6-2, and this is a big, famous victory for Tottenham here. What a win that was, and... I, I can't believe that. Every time we play Man City, though, we've got Nottingham Forest coming up next, so we'll probably quick sim that. We will start getting ourselves into the month after. And a big game there against Manchester United. We also have to start thinking about the Champions League qualification, which should be coming very soon. We're going to start getting some loan players out of the club now as well, which is good news. Troy Parrott, a one-year deal to Cagliari. So uh, hopefully he has a good time there. If he can grow just a bit more quicker... Uh, he would be usable. Also trying to get Bennett out on loan as well. See if he grows much, but 64 rated. Probably not going to be someone we ever use. We're getting useless. We're remembering glasses and remembering to move the camera back. We're getting really useless at that. Okay, so it turns out that in FIFA, you don't have qualification, which is fine. No problem there. So Dortmund, Dynamo Kiev and Atalanta are going to be the teams that we take on in our Champions League group. I think we might play that Dortmund game today. Play Man United and Dortmund in this episode. Sounds like a plan to me. But with the plans to give Austin backup goalkeeper this season, I'm going to remove him from the loan list and I'm going to add him to a development plan of sweeper keeper and see if that helps improve him. Apart from Vlahovic getting his first start of the season, this will be the starting 11 here to take on Nottingham Forest, who are freshly promoted. I bet Forest fans are over the moon with that. But I am thoroughly expecting a decent result here. And we get it. 2-0, Regulong and Letaro Martinez scoring again. They had two shots, which equals zero chances. Don't know how that works. Don't ask me. Got another offer here for Sanchez. And this time it's from Chelsea. And I've said it. We're keeping him for at least half of this season. His performances last year earn him the right to still be at the club. I've mentioned it a few times. I aren't just going to move players on for the fun of it. We focus on how they perform in this career mode. And that's how we judge them. And I feel like he was really good for us last year. It's been a little bit of a quiet window. But I do want to give us the opportunity that in January, we do have the money, if needed, to spend. And we will have money to spend in January if it's needed. Because I don't know where we'll be in terms of Champions League and in the league. And it'll be handy to have those opportunities. Now, we do still need to move players on if I were to make deals happen. But at the moment, it's hard to determine who to move out of the club, considering they all played so well last season. I have received a Sessing Young transfer bid here. It's a swap deal with Inter Milan. Now, we have good relations with Inter Milan. I'm not sure I want DeMarco, but I'm also not against that deal. But Sessing Young is a young Englishman who I think is going to continue to grow. So we will reject that one. Well, Sessing Young really is wanted, isn't he? And uh, Sevilla this time. I'm going to reject that again. I think if a big English club comes in for him, we won't be able to hold off. But I think Inter Milan and Sevilla we were probably just good enough to, to kind of hold them aside for now and try and keep him plus. I do imagine if he did move, it probably would be to a big side in England. So we one hour left on the clock. There is going to be no time for no more deals to be made, but I'm okay with that. We had a really busy first episode with transfer dealing. Take a cheeky look at what clubs have done. Aubameyang and Torreira leaving Arsenal. They spent nothing. Aston Villa spent a little bit, but they made a lot. A lot of players leaving Aston Villa there. Brighton sold Moipe and Basuma, but only brought in Fernandez. That could hurt them. Braithwaite, Basuma to Burnley of all teams. Okay. Taylor and Tarkovsky leaving Burnley. Chelsea didn't spend a penny, but they did sell some in Emerson, Kovacic, Broja and Aspi leaving the club. Crystal Palace spent quite a bit of cash. Sensei Gilbert and Herrera as Reedvald leaves. A lot of money spent by Everton, but also a lot of money brought in. Calvert-Lewin leaving the club. That is a huge move. Of course, Mad's a player we wanted. They signed Gundagan as well as Jovic. So... Wow, that's a big turnaround. Pickford leaving as well. Fulham signed a lot of players, as you'd expect, considering they're freshly promoted. Leeds signing Villa and Gomez, letting go of Phillips, who I wanted, and Greenwood. Leicester spent 154 million with zero going out. If you remember correctly, they did finish in Europe last season in the Champions League places. They're flexing to try and stay there again. Liverpool did sign Kane, but so Thiago and Firmino. When Dagan and Herrera leave Man City, no acquisitions coming in. Not in a Manchester United either. Martial, Greenwood, Lindelof and Williams leaving the club. Middlesbrough, who got promoted as well, don't look set to do well this season as they only spent 4.75 million. 
they could be in trouble. Forest only spending 11.5 as well. Southampton spending 49 and selling £6 million worth. We spent 165 million making 98 million profit. So we didn't actually spend that much, which is kind of what I imagine Tottenham would do in reality. I would have liked to have seen a couple more players leave the club, but I'm happy with the team we've got. Jal Pedro has left Watford and they haven't brought anyone in. West Ham spending 36 million, signing a new striker in Moy Pay. Wolf spending 41, but selling 76. Neto, Silva, and Cody leaving the club. As that rounds up the transfer window here in England. I'm very happy with our window. We did get an offer for Lloris from Arsenal, of all clubs, right at the end, but that's definitely not something that's going to happen. And now we can focus on the season ahead of us. It's time to take on the other side of Manchester, of course, today. Manchester United, we've already beaten them once this season in the Community Shield. But that does not mean that we'll beat them in this Premiership game. Starting 11, as strong as possible. I think we've got a really good chance to beat them. The league champions last year, let's remember. But they've made pretty much no changes to the squad. Expecting that this team can do the business again. We'd be top of the league if we win this. Surely, three wins from three in the Premiership should put us top of the league. I'm hoping we would be. I'm going to try and free Son there instantly. Oh my God, Son is a god. Son is a god. But the question is, is anybody trying to get in there? And Letaro Martinez was. It probably wasn't the correct ball across, but already showing what he can do in the opening seconds of this game. There goes Sancho. Norris tries to cut it out. Fred into Bruno Fernandes. He could cause the problems today. Romero's really fluffed his lines there. And uh, Romero does a lot good, doesn't he? We know that. He's been brilliant for us. But he does have a mistake in him. Like the mistake in the Tammy Abraham goal. Uh, and there, just pass it back to the goalkeeper. Boot it clear. Don't try and drive forward with the ball. You've been closed down. 1-0 Man United. We know this season, though. 1-0 isn't good enough for any team against us. We've got the firepower this year round to punish teams. So 1-0 is not going to be enough for Man United, although they do play in a much harder fashion to deal with than, say, Manchester City did. And if they get a second here, straight away, smash and grab. They won't do, though. Neres is on the ball now. Neres is still on the ball. Space opening up a little bit here for Neres. Space opening up a little bit here for Neres. He's still got runners. Bobby Firmino's one of them, but wasn't the right pass. Might be egg now. Look at how compact Manchester United are all of a sudden. Regulon used the runner son there, didn't he? Beautifully. Not a bad overhead kick from Firmino. And Deli Ali will find the back of the net. And I told you this year, boys, you can't sleep on us. Even if we go one down, we will find the back of the net. Would have been nice if Firmino had have scored the spectacular here. Just because, you know, it's nice to score these. He probably should have knocked it back across, to be fair. But Deli's open net. Well, it looks like we're only bringing you bangers for live comms this year, boys. Only bangers. Because so far... There hasn't been a dull match. We're going to go short. short corner it is. Sancho. Oh, that's great footwork. That burst of pace there was fantastic. Fred. Maguire. If they lose the ball here, though, Manchester United could be in trouble. Paul Pogba has done brilliantly to get it to Ronaldo. And Scott McTominay will make it 2-1. It's not the first time he scored past me. And both times, he's done an unbelievable run in the box where he's unmarked. And that's exactly what's happened again. We've got horrendous news. As Letaro Martinez is still on the floor. Not an ideal situation. But this is why you have Dusan Vlahovic on the bench. He will come on the pitch and get gifted an opportunity. I'm sure. McTominay. Oh, that's lovely. Oh, what a block that is from Tandanga. They're the better side out there at the moment. Firmino. Oh, he's done lovely. He's done lovely. Go on then, Deli. You can have that, son. Dusan Blahovic. Surely gets us back into the game. Oh, he needed to take a better touch. It just wasn't a good touch. Pogba off for Man United and Rashford on. More pace. Just exactly what we don't want. That ball in. Oh, Tandanga. Oh, Tandanga again. Maybe. Can we get it across? Tandanga can get it across, maybe. Oh, I can't. Maguire's so strong. This ball there is brilliant. If we get onto it, it is. Neres will collect that. Well in, Neres. He's got the pace, hasn't he? I'll play that one across. Back across. Oh, Firmino might get onto it. He does get onto it. Firmino still. Firmino. Oh, what a save that is. Son. Firmino. Wants Bergwin to make the run. He wants Emerson to make the run as well. And we will get it out wide to Emerson. Emerson now is going to play that one across to Bergwin. Oh, it's another great save from De Gea. And he is basically winning Manchester United the points here today. There goes the full-time whistle. And as I said, De Gea genuinely won that game for Manchester United there. I think we were potentially gifted the better opportunities. 
and it just didn't pay off. Well, ideas are going top of the league out of the window there instantly, weren't they? Ideas are going top of the league out of the window instantly. But now it is time for Spurs to welcome back Champions League football. Fantastic news about Lautaro because he's only out for five days. Now, he will miss this game here against Borussia Dortmund, but I don't mind. As long as it isn't a free two, four, eight month injury, no issue whatsoever. A little touch of rotation due to fitness in this one, of course, just playing Manchester United, but this will be the starting 11. I trust Dusan Vlahovic today up top next to Firmino. Son, I was tempted whether to start him up top or not, but I want to give Vlahovic the game time. I want to improve him so he gets better. They have Marla and Dominic Calvert-Lewin up top, so this is going to be extremely difficult, as well as signing Rabiot. Honestly, such a massive feel about this one, man. A massive feel. And I'm glad that it's Dortmund, our first opponents back in the Champions League. You know, a big-time opponent. They're established. They've been in the Champions League now for a lot of years. And it's nice to be taking them on. It's nice to have Champions League football in this stadium as well. Let's go, boys. It might not be a like-for-like -like replacement, but bringing in Dominic Calvert-Lewin after losing Erling Haaland, not a bad deal. I'm impressed, Dortmund. I am very impressed. And the belly, of course, coming in for his first start of the season. He's been made to fight for that camp position this year. Of course, now we're not playing the 4-3-3 anywhere near as much, although we might be forced into that if we were to have injuries. This is great play here off the bat to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Oh, Neres' footwork's brilliant. Dusan Vlahovic now. Just make the right choice. The right choice was Son, but he can't pass. He just, Dusan just can't pass. Early pressure for Dortmund. This will not be an easy night for us if we let Dortmund get any control in the game. Well, the biggest thing we have to adjust to now is playing the extra games, right? Oh, that's lovely play. Oh, that's lovely play. Dusan Vlahovic, please. Dusan Vlahovic repays my faith with the goal. And that's why he's our number nine. I have to admit it was really good play between Firmino and Dembele Neres to get us into that position, cutting them wide open. That's a beautiful finish. If he does this more often, he really is good enough to be our number one striker. His first Champions League goal, of course, for Tottenham. And I think probably his first Champions League goal ever. Uh, I'm not sure if Fiorentino have been in the Champions League for a while now. And Mbele came to play today, didn't he? Neres now. Don't give him space, boys. Neres. What's he going to do? I'm going to pull that one back because and Mbele is right there to fire off the shot. And that's a great save for me now. Dusan Vlahovic knows if he can get that ball across that Neres is surely in. Neres now wide open to make it two. He's hit the post. Can you believe it? We're going to get the ball back. Aarons will pull it back to Endembele. He can't get it to him. endembele has got it back. They'll fire it in and it will be a corner and I can breathe. Neres will be devastated about this. He goes clean through, makes a great run and somehow he's managed to hit the outside of the post. We're happy to play that ball. Max Aarons is happy to make the mistake. We do have a mistake in us, don't we? And now we're in trouble. Now we're in trouble. I have to cover that angle. And they might score it and they do. Daniel Marlon does score it. I had to cover the angle for the pass and the tap in. But Marlon's just an unbelievable finisher of the football. And us missing our chances again is becoming very costly. The tough position that Max Aaron's put us in, probably showing a little bit of his age there and his naivety. His first Champions League game as well. Lloris there. Finds Timber. Oh, we just can't get that pass out of our feet again. We seem to be struggling and we're rushing it a little bit now, which we don't want to do. That is a brilliant tackle from Timber. To slow down what would have been a really good counter-attack. And then Endebele trying to win it back. Reina now. Might be done enough, has he? Oh, we might be out here. We might have just managed to get our way out. Vlahovic plays in Neres. Neres then back to Vlahovic. Vlahovic plays that one across to Son. Son doesn't usually make the mistake from these positions. And he doesn't. He doesn't make those mistakes from this position. And Hyung Min Son will make it 2-1. We really are starting to see the best out of him. We really are. He's such a special player. Perfect way to go in at half time as well, let's be honest. Son bagging that goal. Well, that's a great ball. Reina now. Can't control it. Romero does brilliantly. Run the Neres. Show me what you've got. Run the length, Neres. Run the length, Neres. Oh my god, what a ball from Romero to Neres. And Neres looks up twice because he knew he had Son flying into the box. And there we go, it will be free. And surely that's going to give us a Champions League win here on opening night at this Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. I can't blame Neres for not taking this on either. After not making the opportunity count last time out, it does not shock me that he plays it on to Son. 
Oh, great ball. Forward, Rabio scores a brilliant goal. What a finish that is from Rabio. We will bring on Davis, actually. Regulon's tired. He could do with just a little bit of that defensive impetus that he has. But this is a beautiful finish from Rabio. He scuffs it a bit. Lloris caught off his line. Well, he's played every single bit of football this season so far, and he needs a little bit of a rest as son. He's done the job that we needed from him tonight. We will bring on Gil, the youngster with a lot of promise, and a wacky, wacky hairdo. And now this is my issue, right? Surely I go for this now. Go on then, Gil. Oh, that's lovely. Dominguez has come on the pitch, and he's a danger in front of goal. Is our Dominguez. And that will be another 4-2 here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And I'm going to take this all day long. Dominguez is having a pretty decent episode. He's probably the best player to come on at Cam from the bench. He's been a super sub. That's two goals now from a sub position. Uh, great play from Gil to find him. And they're wide open at the back when we can win it back. Oybierg finds Aarons. Neres has been open too much today, personally. Dusan Vlahovic to finish the game off. Oh... Dominguez, though, picks the ball back up. Can't do anything with it. Pretty dominant, I must say. Spurs will win their first Champions League game under the reign of Yorkie. A bit Borussia Dortmund here, 2-1. What a night that will have been at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. The fans go home very happy after losing that Man United game. Son, fantastic. Son Aldo is what you've been calling him in the comments. And I 100% agree. What a player he is. Sometimes you just get players who start the season on fire. Son is doing just that. Absolutely on fire in this one today. He's proving how important he is to the club. Again, grabs that winner. Grabs a brace as well. Fantastic stuff. We are sat second in the table behind Liverpool, who of course have improved this year. Manchester City on the same points as us. Man United just a point behind. And then Leicester City, who will be good in this season because they've improved massively. A good set of games coming up next time out as well. We probably will get the Dynamo Kiev game. We might even get a couple of games into the month of october we'll just see how it goes um in terms of time but that's gonna be it for this one guys thank you very much for watching i appreciate each and every one of you for supporting this series and continuing to support me and my journey as a content creator you're all bloody legends just don't forget that every single day when you wake up just remember you're a legend take it easy i'll see you in the next one